Hello and welcome back to our optimization tips and tricks series. In this episode, we'll be looking at casting. Now, one of the common debates you always see is the efficiency of casting versus, say, interfaces and that argument about what is better to use. Now, it's important to realize that these are two very different processes and techniques that we use for different reasons. So I want to focus entirely just on casting and how we can improve our casting performance, what it actually does to the game and how it actually affects memory usage. So let's jump in and take a look. So one of the biggest hot topics we always see in here are people comparing and contrasting what's better to use, a, a cast or an interface to handle your data. Now, we can talk about the pros and cons of casting and where you should use it and where you shouldn't use it. But more importantly, a thing I wanted to highlight is that casting and interfaces are two different operations that handle things in different ways. They're not a replacement of one another. They do things differently. So you, they're not going to be a, a interface is not going to be a full replacement. And likewise, casting will be a full replacement of interfaces. But that being said, I want to spend this video talking about casting and what it means when you had a casting node to your project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple actor. And there it is. We'll call it BP test tester. And I'll just put a cube in there. Like so. Okay. And we'll just drag that out into my scene. There is my test cube. And I want this test cube to have a reference to the player character. Okay, so on begin play, I'm going to do get player character. And I'm going to cast to my first person character. And plug that in. And when I've done that, I'm going to promote my first person variable. So what it's done here is we are casting the get player character reference here, the parent reference class, which is the character, down to its child version of the first person character, if it succeeds. Now, what casting is actually doing here is not only when we load up this test object, is it going to load up this test object? It's going to load up the first person character object too, which, you know, is not a big deal in this case because chances are your player character is going to be in the scene anyway, already loaded. But let's take a look at what the difference it makes. So if I was to select my cube here and in the browser, we're just going to save the object and then we go to size map. And what size map will do is it will show you how much memory or disk space an object is taking. So if I change that to a disk size, this is how much space it could take up on the disk. So hard disk, whatever it is you're doing, actually that's how much it could take. And you see what each asset's taken up. So the T many, uh, texture is taking up 21.1 megabytes and so on and so forth. If I change the top here to display the memory size, this is how much memory it's going to take up, right? So here we see we've got the big purple section and over here we've got the red section. This red section is actually just a static mesh, the cube that's inside of it. Okay, so that is very little. And then down here we've got this turquoise looking one and this is just the, the material. Yeah, very basic setup. The thing that's actually taking up most of the space in here is this first person character reference. Now that's odd because that's not a first person character, that's just a tester cube. The reason why that comes up is because we're cast into the first person character, it has to load up the first person character into memory. Now, as I said, when you're playing a game, not a big deal because chances are your player character is already loaded in the game. So you'll find things like casting to the game mode, game instance, things that are always gonna be present, and not a big deal because they're always going to be loaded in memory. You can always get to them. It's not an issue really whatsoever. The issue comes is when you're trying to reference something that isn't in the level and you're just doing like a tester, like a check of if something is there or not. That's when it becomes problematic because now you're loading stuff into memory, which you don't want to do. You, know, you don't load up stuff that you're not going to use. So be very careful about what it is that you're casting to. Make sure the thing you're casting to is something that is actually already loaded in the map as part of the map. Now to show you the difference, if I, this is 92.2 .2 megabytes. If I go out of my way to take out the cast there, I'll keep the variable on it, but I'll change the variable here to a character reference so I can link it directly. Yep. 
and plug that in there. So the only difference here was the cast node, right? But because that cast node's not there, this is no longer referencing it. So if I right click and do size map on this now, you'll see that that is now gone. And we've gone down from 90 megabytes down to 1.3 megabytes, which you may think, oh, that's a lot better. But keep in mind, your player character's probably gonna be loaded up in the map anyway. So that 90 megabytes is gonna be there regardless. So be aware of what you're casting to and be careful that making sure that you are casting something that you know is going to be loaded in the map already and not something that's going to be destroyed or possibly destroyed you will ideally find something that's already always been there and once you are casting you want to make sure you are also promoting it to a variable as what you're doing is you're changing this memory uh, location reference to a different reference yeah so you just you're just storing it once you've done it once that's it you don't have to do it ever again so if you are going to do a cast do it on begin play or other one shot sort of events don't do it on ticks or uh, fast timers if you don't need to uh, it will save you a lot of uh, processes there okay so bear that in mind when working on casting that is what you want to try and do is focus on the casts that are accessing things that aren't part of your main map that you're playing in at the moment okay so there you go that is basically casting how it can be improved if you are using it uh, but the most important thing is not to be scared of it. Uh, it has its uses. It's not the be-all and end-all. So feel free to use it when it makes sense to. Now, in this video, we also touched upon the size map. We'll be touching back on the size map later in another video. But in the next video, we'll be taking a look at collisions and how we can improve the performance and uh, our optimization of our collisions. So you, you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>